So today we have Green Oval Badge Base Disaster, this bit, fitted with Ford Base Disaster here. So 2.2 TD, TD, CI, TD, Ford. You know what the problem is going to be. So this is not its first rodeo. That is not the original TD to DCI to DDCI. That died last year. This is a new replacement TDC to DCCI thing, 2.2 uh, of Doom, that basically has done 12,000 miles. And I will demonstrate the problem. Listen for the nice gallop when we fire it up. Gallop, three cylinders, all lights out, engine management light out, but if I just rev it, almost sounds all right there, that's, that's like four cylinders. Would have managed to ascertain by the shaking and the smoke that it is broken. So we're assuming it's a missing a cylinder. It sounds like it's missing a cylinder. And if you go down here, yeah, that's diesel coming out of the exhaust. So, it's died. So the gallop would make you think that one of the cylinders isn't doing anything. That would sort of eradicate the injector idea. Oh, the viscous fan has just come on. What we may attempt doing before it explodes, we're um, we could compression test it, I suppose but it's only going to tell us what we already know. I cannot see that being with that much smoke an injector. And if it is an injector, it will have plasma the piston. Admittedly though, one thing that it is not doing is breathing like a steam train is what they normally do. No. There are some other possibilities. We could have a cylinder head gasket gone between two cylinders. But it did produce an awfully large amount of um, grey smoke earlier. A lot of oily, nasty. Well, I think the best bet is probably, as we know that something nasty will have happened to it, just to take it out and put it on an engine stand and take it apart. Because there's no point having to deal with all this my old stuff, trying to dismantle it in there. We'll just go full yeehaw and, and take that out of a Land Rover and, um, and then we'll strip it and see what's wrong with it. I'd be very surprised to find it is just an injector, because I don't think it would be knocking if it was bucketing enough fuel in and it was trying to burn it. Yeah, let's just turn it off before it dies. Funnily enough, it has got the pollution light on, so it's obviously doing some polluting. Where's the dipstick? Let's just see how much oil we have, whether we've got loads of diesel in the sumps. No, nope, that's still oil, so that's good. So, for today's excitement, I'll have to find somewhere to park this where I don't need to move it again for a while and um, it's not in the way and take that out of there. That'll be a joyous experience, won't it?
I mean, there is plenty of room up the front here, but seeing as that's a transit engineering gearbox, poorly engineered. I mean, the bit I do love about Land Rover engineering is that um, when we decided to fit this engine, um, that bit, the fuel pump housing down there doesn't miss the chassis. So instead of doing engine re-engineering, what we did is put the engine in like that. So basically, that uh, they made the back mounts longer. So this engine is you like, like, is this my eyesight? No, 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 you know, it's definitely not straight. It lifts off to one side. I think they made the cover so it looks straight so that when you've got the plastic cover on the top here, you can't sort of see it. But basically, it ain't that shame the chassis. It's sort of like that. Quality. I mean, uh, good one there, Solio. That was, that was brilliant. That was right. Land Rover inside. Now, we had a bit more of a fiddle with this the other day. And I'm not 100% sure that it might not just have had gasket gone between two cylinders as it hasn't exploded and it's not briefing like a train. So I thought before I spent hours tearing an engine out, it might be easier to tear a cylinder head off first because that's reasonably accessible apart from obviously it's a height issues. So we're going to need the little man stalls. Stands, yes, Fudgy, you can laugh, you're lying under an Iveco. And um, then basically, if it turns out, because I need to, uh, to, to get the head off, obviously I've got to drop inlet manifold, injectors, rocker cover will have to come out, most of the engine bracketry, it's a turbocharger and the manifold this side will have to come out of the way. And then we've got to extract all the auxiliary pulleys and the front timing cover off of it to release the chain to lift the top off. Now, in theory, if it has got crank damage or a melted piston, we are no different. It's just a bit more difficult to do with it bolted in here. And if it turns out to be a head gasket, then we haven't had to go through the arse of unbolting the whole thing. I mean, the fact that it has only done 12,000 miles makes you think there's a possibility that it may not have shat itself. But knowing Ford engines, it, it may possibly. So I'm going to go huzzah! make this big bit on here fall off of here and i'm taking that you're going to have to help me take this bonnet off in a minute yeah because it's not like because it's got a stupid bump in it because the engine doesn't fit you can't do what you used to do with land rovers fold it back, fold it back against the windscreen because what it does now is fall forwards even quicker than it did before oh, that's because it's got the, it's like the capri power bowls, it's got the capri it? power bowls to clear this ford engine that shouldn't be in there and um and i'm even propped up with bits of wood I don't think it's the way forwards. I mean, before they used to stay there for a bit till the wind blew and then come and attack you when you weren't in the bad head when you weren't looking. So, but what we're going to go for, I think, is we'll take it off and try and put it somewhere where it's not going to come to any harm. We could kind of put it in the back of the Land Rover, couldn't we? That sounds like a lot of... We could just lean it against something. We can find somewhere to lean it where it won't if get. It snows, we've got ourselves a sled. No, because this is probably quite a valuable because people like paying lots of money for these things. Yeah. Yeah, slightly overinflated prices. The Land Roverists will argue that they're worth all of the ten million pounds that they want for them. They won't. I, I don't quite understand it. I used to drive nothing but these, and as I said in the last bit of the video about two minutes ago, for the ten seconds ago for this lot, and two days ago for us. Well, I bought a Land Cruiser. Land Cruiser. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's look back. <laughs> so, so side. Yeah, swapped right. I mean, my grandfather will turn in his grave because I don't think he had a bit of a fighting problem with the Japanese at one point. But all of that's forgotten about. I mean, Christ, everyone drives. We fixed German vehicles, and we've stopped holding that against them. So I think, yeah, we'll um, we'll lift the bonnet out, and then I'm going to go and rip the head off. I think that's the best way forward. And let's hope, fingers crossed, it turns out, for, especially for the customer, it turns out to be a head gasket gone. That would be good. Because I DA an injector. It's, it's, it's got a real gallop to it, which would mean it's missing compression. So it could be washing itself out, but you would have thought the gallop would go after three or four days of being stood. If it's, and it makes no knocky noises. No. It's just running on three and a half. Um, but the, but the grey whitey shitty smoke coming out of it and the fact it isn't really the crankcase pressure is pretty low mm -hmm. it's not chuffing its nuts it's off, not chuffing its nuts off. and i mean the last two two we had in here that had burnt a bowl through a piston you could dry your air with the um <laughs> with the with the engine with the engine crankcase pressure which makes you think it probably may not fingers crossed a burnt hole for a piston it's possible 
Yeah, so the grey smoke would be... The, the, the grey smoke could be probably going to... And we have got a little bit... I mean, we've still got loads of coolant, but we have got... I done did the cap this morning, and it was backed in here on Saturday, and it went... Not massively. Still holding pressure. But it's got pressure in the cooling system, which would sort of lean you towards head gasket failure. I mean, we could spend ages blowing it up, testing it, but we're only going to... Strip it. Strip it anyway. So I think the best bet is to is to go the full yeehaw and pull the head off of it. And I'll spend the day painfully lying. Because you need to be like six foot eight to... You do. You do. Yeah, so it's a Land Rover downside. But I used to do it when I was younger. Because I thought these things were brilliant. That's right, because you all thought these were the, these used to be Those nice are pastiche. You can't know it's aluminium, you mum. Yeah, it's aluminium with an anodized coating on it. Oh, That's the wing pastiche. top. Wing top, because if, normally if you stand on a Land Rover wing without one of them, it just <laughs> bends. Yeah. And if you stand on one of these, it bends, but it doesn't bend quite as much. Yeah, I don't think we'll stand on these. No, no, I'm not going to. No, I'm going <laughs> to lie in here. I'll probably just sit in that hole, to be honest. <laughs> That's quite like this. Nice yeah, cushion. cushion. I'm just going to sit on top of here, wave my little legs in there and, and pull bits off of it. Yeah. So now we're waffling. Okay. That's um, more we'll tons of... Uh, no, 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 it's just Land Rover. Just straight off and I'll go and answer the phone. And if you look at it, it does look like this was a Land Rover engine, El Nouveau, rather than an Ivor Surly Whirly. It's got FUD there, and it's got a Land Rover part supply number on it there. So it's possible that it either got rebuilt, or it got a new Land Rover engine bought for it. So anyway, nothing is broken in the can box. So all the valves are closed where all the valves are functioning, let's put it that way, opening and closing. So that sort of removes one of the possible failures. So, as we've got grey smoke, we're going to keep going. So we're going to take this top quality cam cover off. I mean, we have been through some beautiful pieces of engineering to get this out. So, obviously, Land Rover-wise, it's got a stupid great big fan hub bolted on the front of it. It was easier to leave the fan on it. Once you'd managed to wrestle the air box out of the impossible hole to get it out of over there by moving that stupid pipe, then taking this huge bracket off that revolves removing the alternator, but you can't actually take one of the alternator bolts out because it's the steering shaft quality, um, dangled uh, this here forward wiring on this around, beat on some Land Rover based piping, apart from that bit is forward based. Oh, we're having another wee. Go oh, on, just dribble a bit more out on the floor. Um, so what I've got to do is undo the 15mm crank pulley bolt at the front, remove this case, drop the timing chain, and then exhaust manifold, because it's got some stupid guard on it, so you can't access the bolt, so you have to take that housing off to get to the exhaust manifold bolts. Standard transit type exhaust um, in that housing, so I'll pull that this way, inject us around, as you'll see. They don't look like they've been terribly reconditioned. If they're only 12,000 miles old, they might have been the original ones back in it, which is a worrying. And then basically we need to fight on, get this head off. I'll just remove that vacuum part there, and that can go and sit there. But we are winning. I think that's the word. It's quite depressing. I shall keep going. <laughs> As you can see, we now are to the point where the um, 
Camshaft. Camshaft. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We'll lift out. And then, he said lift out. Just lift out like that. And what? We can get the last of the head bolts underneath it. And um, basically whip the head off. Now, we did find there's quite a lot of diesel in the oil, which isn't terribly good. Um, nothing is damaged, damaged. And when we checked it the other day, it didn't have a lot of diesel in the oil. Or perhaps it did and we missed it. I don't think we missed it. So, I mean, we've only run it for five minutes to bring it in here. But if it's slinging that much fuel in the oil, we've probably got hole in a piston. But anyway, so these head, head bolts are one it wonders. They're only usable once they're stretch. So I'm going to wick these two cams out. There's no need to worry about keeping which to which because they're obviously one drives a vacuum pump. So you can't get that wrong. And then we're going to get in here, heave on these big ugly bolts, pull this head off. And then basically we know where we're going. So I'm going to make a horrible oily mess on time lapse again now and then huzzah this off and we'll have a look. If we get lucky, it's got a head gasket gone. If we get unlucky, it's got all through a piston. And as I say again, I don't think this was just a failed injector. If it is just a failed injector, it's taken a cylinder out because we had no compression on at least one and a half. So one way of finding out. <laughs> point where everything is off and bolts is out. Here it goes. Let's see if we can vehicle this out of there like that without getting covered in schmoo. Blimey, let's go and put this somewhere sensible. I can go leak snot on something better. Right. What have we got? You, I think I just got absolutely covered in snot. Knock it out again. Bolts. Have we got hole in a piston? Yes. Ooh. Oh dear. It has left the building. It may not left the building completely. Number three, she's not very nice. Right, so, as expected, it's done a Ford engine and melted number three piston. It's always number three. Look at that, Fudgy. I'm gonna to have to put some bolts in to wind that over up to the top, but that has died. You'll see my ugly mug, but number three piston, she is a gone. <laughs> It has left the building. Whether the block has survived or not, I think it may have done. We'll wind it over a minute and find out. Let's get rid of that and get some more rags. Bit of a mop up. Ooh. That one's all right. Yep, yeah, number three. I'll bring you in here for a closer look. But, uh, but that is dead because I can actually see the top of the ring and the outside of it so right so we swing in for the close-up so i'll try and lean over here you can see obviously number one she's all right number two and then we come to number three so number three you can see the edges of the piston melted off there and can you actually see you can see the top oil compression ring so all that we can really hope is let me get a bar let's go over here and get a bar that possibly the bore has survived and it might be repairable otherwise this is yet another Ford based boat anchor and we're going to have to spend 
thousands. So, what does that look like? I'm not expecting it to be good. Did it survive? Uh, no, no, she's done. No, that's dead. Absolutely and totally at its death. Right. So, as you would have seen, melted piston. Just spoke to the customer who basically said, I've sort of had enough now, bought this new, and we did spend quite a lot on it. I'm gonna go, I've found the service history in here. Obviously with the fella's permission, because I did ask. Because I was thinking this had done about 12,000 miles. It may have done a little bit more. And I did think earlier that the possibility that this actually was a genuine Ford Land Rover type unit. No, 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 I found the problem. There beeth the problem. Now, I will not fit these. I've made this mistake. I've a So what will have happened to this engine, and I will bet you a pound to a piece of that, what has happened to it. So I've had two of these two twos fail from this lot. So this engine is about 3,000 quid from Iversurl, comes with a year's warranty. So the first one, they stick them all together with silicon. You can get gaskets for them now. Trying to parts UK, do a sump gasket and a front timing cover gasket so you don't have to do the Ford thing and stick it together with silicon because you're tight and you're cheap and the engines are rubbish. So what not seems to happen is that when Iversell sloshed 10 gallons of black silicon over everything, that funnily enough gets into the engine's oil pump, gets through past the, um, the uh, oil pump strainer, and then the last one of these we had that did 5,300 miles had managed to push a lump of black silicon through the system and squirted it and pushed it into the piston oiler for cylinder three and done that to one at 5,400 miles. So I am willing to bet that if I actually stripped this down, took the sump off, the, oil, the piston oiler sits at the bottom of the cylinder and points up and oils and cools the bottom of the piston. That's why the piston's melted, because basically it won't be getting no oil squirting out it and why the cylinder's blued, because um, it wasn't getting lubricated. And they'll tell you if you phone up, because I've had this argument a couple of times. Oh, yeah, no, that was you. No, it wasn't. I don't put engines together with, I will put silicon on if I have to and there's no other way around. And we, we always use a grey, um, decent quality. It's a dark Durco, it's that here. So Durco, which is grey and I like, and I don't slosh it on. I don't even like using it, really. If it can have a gasket, it should have a gasket. So vast amounts of black silicon and a piston oiler would be either surly whirly wouldn't it so currently you see the trigger video last week both those trigger engines that one sat on that stand and the one before that one's done 61 the one before did 40 came from this lot sadly this one now there is a receipt in here i'm not going to show you the receipt because obviously that's not my business from the previous garage and i don't this this is not their fault at all um so this had a brand new engine gearbox and transmission transfer case fitted on the 14th of the third 2022 at 167,000 miles it's just done over 192 now when it died it wasn't a cheap operation as I'm sure you can understand. The parts were very expensive. The labour was immensely reasonable. They're a local garage. They're good. What they did, perfect. And I mean, this lot are bad. I won't fit one. I won't fit one. I mean, um, I'm not sorry. Let's be honest. That's the wrong piece of paper. I won't fit one. I won't mention their name, but I won't fit one. I just won't take the chance. The engine is about 2,350 quid plus the VAT from your local motor parts supplier. And to be honest, if you do fit one, you've, it technically comes with a year's warranty, which comes through us. So you sit there like that. Because you know if it baths itself all over the place like they do, um, either Searle won't warranty it. One of my mates had to take him to court and he's still arguing that. Um, I gave up. It was just cheaper to spend 5,000 quid and fit my customer another engine. 
Um, I couldn't even get an engineer's report out of them. I know what was wrong with it. I took it apart before I sent it back to them. But then also comes the other thing that, I mean, I used to be a Land Rover lunatic, I've learnt. I mean, if this was a 90s 200 TDI or a 300 TDI, one of these, we wouldn't be here. This thing would be. If it had worn it died, it would have worn itself out or the cam belt would have snapped. If the cam belt snapped, it's fixable. You uh, put some new push rods in it, put a new belt on, they go again. TD5s, lots of people love them. I was never a fan. They were a nightmare back in the day. Piss, poor, build quality. It's an embarrassment, that badge. They're famed for it. I mean, we built one-ish good Land Rover. That was an 80-inch Series 1, and it's been downhill since then. Because the British have a brilliant ability of coming up with quite a good idea, and they're never advancing on it, or, um, or going on the cheap. So you take one of these. Rubbish plastic wheel arches that fall off. They've been falling off since y Reg, old y Reg, not 2001, like 1981, 80, 83. Crap door handles that fall off. They brought them out in 1990. Used to have lifty ones. They fall off all the time. The wing mirrors have always been rubbish. They cheapened them that much in the later ones. We got rid of the vent panels. We never improved the dashboard. We put another one in, that's rubbish. Um, the paint quality's always been awful, that falls off of them. Um, plastic, rubbish, cheap, nasty. Now, Land Rover, there was people love, because the one thing that you used to be able to do with your Land Rover was it's a Meccano kit and you can keep fixing it. Not with this pile of junk. I mean, you look at this bonnet and you think, oh, hang on, let me chuck this in here. Yeah, oh, they got this. Nice hump in it. The only reason we got this hump in it is we were too tight to re-engineer the engine to fit in the truck. So we bodged the engine mounts and then we put that in because the bonnet won't close because that was a cheaper option. This is rubbish. Nothing against it. I mean, this one's done pretty well. The fact it got to 167,000 miles before it shut itself the first time was pretty good going. Um, and it drives me insane all this crap and eco rubbish and stuff that we have. So, problem is, things aren't built very well anymore. It's cheap and rubbish. I mean, the only upside is that that's a, not an Ingenium diesel, I suppose. I don't even know if they fitted them in these things. They are absolute snot. Built to a load of um, emission, Euro, um, Euro emissions that weren't emissionable. So noises, sat there, they've got, uh, they built them lighter to make them quieter, less resistance. If you've ever had the unfortunate of owning an Ingenium diesel in an Evoke, you can get one in your new one of these. They're rubbish. Absolute rubbish. And how they, all these manufacturers get away with it. I mean, the fact that this thing, I mean, this vehicle has technically done just under 20,000 miles with this brand new engine. The gearbox is fine, all the rest of it is, but with that brand new bit in there. Uh, cost a nearly 10 grand to do it. Um, I'd be screaming, but you've got no comeback. It's done more than its year. And I think this is half the, the world's pollution problems. We just throw things away. Stuff, people don't keep their vehicles anymore. Never been to a scrapyard recently. I mean, there's eight, six, eight year old stuff up on the racks in the run going in because it's pooped itself. It's thousands to fix it, and we, as the consumer, take the hit. And they're trying to sell us electric cars. Electric cars are deadly, absolutely deadly. I mean, if this thing catches fire, I stand a chance of getting it out of here by pushing it and putting it out. If this was a lithium-powered electric, not that they do a 90, but I'm sure some idiot will fit you one in there and tell you that You've seen the videos. Oh no, they're not dangerous. Lithium is lethal. Deadly. Self oxygen, self feeding. If it catches fire, you ain't putting that out. But you bolted it in a vehicle. I mean, a tank of petrol looks harmless compared to. And, um, and we're burning Britain. We don't have enough renewable energy. So we're burning natural gas to heat water, to make steam, to drive turbines, to make electric, to send it down power lines 
to put it through transformers so you can charge your Tesla. Uh, hang on a minute. Why don't you just put the natural gas, direct the source, in a vehicle? In the original, the old four-stroke internal combustion engine, there's nothing wrong with a combustion engine. It's always going to be the fuel. And the fuel is because this is a diesel engine. Rudolf Diesel, the man that invented the diesel engine, he invented them to run on peanut oil. It's only OPEC. The, the only reason we have the pollution we have is that these things are running on crude oil refined out of the deck because it's all about the monies. Whereas, to be honest, with a bit of jiggery-pokery, um, you're going to have to do some awful software adjustment because then it comes into software. So this has got electronic injectors, a rubbish engine management computer bolted there, a cheap wiring on this, it will fail. If it had a properly built mechanical fuel pump and mechanical set of injectors, it may not possibly uh, um, hit the same miles per gallon, but it will stay working. Whereas this one will blow up and you'll have to put three of those in against the original mechanical one. So any fuel cost saving that you got or any environmental saving has gone clean out the window because you've had to make another two engines, which involves smelting, digging up stuff, you know, plastics, oils, general nasty stuff. So if things were made to stay working and we kept things, most pollution ever made in a vehicle's life is when it's made. So to be honest, if you don't buy one to replace it and you haven't bought an electric one, because lithium mining, go and have a look on, on here on YouTube. It's not nice. And, um, and the idea is crap. The, uh, they tried it, turn of the century, New York, all the New York taxis were electric, they couldn't make it work. They still won't be able to make it work now. Um, lithium is dangerous. And, um, and the, power, the losses between generating electric and charging your car are immense. And then electric batteries are hit by, I mean, cold flames. I mean, all of that crap in, uh, in Luton caused by a, a smoking posh Range Rover parked in a car park and no one could put it out. That had been a diesel Range Rover, which it was a diesel hybrid Range Rover, remember? They tried to claim it was diesel. It wasn't. It wasn't the diesel bit that caused the problem. It was the lithium battery going up. So keep your stuff. That's the world's pollution problems, unless I'm a complete numpty. Um, I've got spanners that are 20 years old because I paid a bit more for them and they were good quality and I've still got them. I've got electrical tools that are 20 years old. But like now, I buy a whacker gun, it lasts a year and a half, falls apart. Yes, it was 300 quid, um, but the 500 quid one, everything is built to be chuck away. Your microwave, you buy a microwave, it goes wrong five or four years down the line and you think, oh, so I get repaired? No, I'll toss it and I'll go and buy one for 150 quid from Tesco's because they're cheap as chips. Um, and to be honest, we've also done the, the other side of things, that there isn't in every little village in town a man that fixes your microwave, that used to fix your washing machines, your kettles, your cookers, repaired things, and you held on to stuff because it had a value. They've all gone. People like me are going. There ain't many people who pull that down. If you took that to your stand, most of your standard posh garages, they'd go, Ugh. engine. Yeah, that, that'd be six or seven thousand quid because don't want to take it apart. Too much easier just to order another one in a box and pay some ill-educated spanner monkey, um, or oil filter monkey, because we don't fix things. I can fix that if it wasn't cost prohibitive, and it is cost prohibitive. I'd need, possibly I could get my engineering firm to sleeve the block. Um, the crank's probably savable. I'm gonna need some pistons, some gaskets, some bits and bobs. I'm gonna have to pay some attention to the head because that's not in the best of conditions because it's obviously had bits of melted piston thrown at it. Um, and then try and make, see if we can buy yet another set of fuel injectors for it because they're awful quality and fail all the time and they're the other things that do this because uh, Ford don't seem to be able to make or supply a set of fuel injectors that actually stay injecting fuel. The mechanical ones from years ago work perfectly, but the electronically controlled ones fail and ruin your engine. I'm probably ranting, but it annoys me that things like this should cost people so much money 
and you're just doomed to failure. And then it gets blamed on people like me. All I want to do is fix your vehicle, make it work, charge you sensible money. I don't want to make a fortune. I want to wave you off. And to be honest, I'd just like to maybe see you once a year for an oil change. But with something like that, or that transit engine out, that rubbish Ford engine out there, and we're not saying some of the Merc engines aren't as bad, the newer ones, Renault, per Renault and Peugeot diesels, they've all been built lightly to keep them quieter and to meet these stupid emissions. And then we've got particulate filters fitted to stop the carbon leaping into the environment. Instead, we're holding it in cylinders now under the bottom of it and just letting it go all over mechanics at five years old when the thing ceased to function. Um, it's gone crazy and we need to introduce some degree of sense back into this world. We need to make stuff that works. Have some pride in what we do. I mean, Land Rovers are rubbish. Poor build quality, cheap junk, and they are sold off their name. And how long they can keep doing it, I don't know. If you've had the unfortunate of trying to fix new shape Range Rovers, Range Rover Sports, Discovery Sports, Discovery uh, Series 4s, well, I think well, they knew there's a new Series 5 or whatever it's called. Um, they are cack. I mean, they look nice. But the engineering quality, I mean, Christ, Land Rover can't even get them out the door half the time because they're blowing up before they leave. It's depressing, isn't it? Anyway, I'm ranting now. So basically, this is the end of um, Land Rover fixing because we've decided we ain't Land Rover fixing. I'm going to put this on eBay. Hopefully, it makes pretty sensible money and someone can buy it. It's their choice to decide whether they want to put another one of them in there. Or maybe put a BMW M57 in. See, old school. It's so out of a, what, 04, 05, 03, 04, 05, 5 series diesel BMW. So you take the engine out of a BMW that's come to the end of its natural life because it's worn out. You know, the car, take the engine out, put it in your Land Rover and it's better. Because that engine's properly engineered and will do three, four, five hundred thousand miles and you won't have to keep replacing it and you won't have to keep creating a load of pollution. You won't have to keep throwing all the oils, the fluids, the everything's away, make an horrible snotty mess like I have done today. Because it works and it's engineered properly. And that junk in there is just a British disgrace and a bodge. And I don't like it. Right, thank you very much, Al. 60 Diesels. Mm -hmm.